Have you ever wondered how a small band of revolutionaries is able to defeat a standing army of a dictator? Well, the answer, at least partially, and definitely in the Cuban Revolution, is guerrilla warfare. The guerrilla warfare utilized by the Cuban revolutionaries had many similarities with Mao Zedong's concept of protracted warfare. The Cuban revolutionaries had never read Mao, and it was only after the fact that they discovered that he had written about what they were forced to create out of necessity when they were challenging the army of Batista. Che Guevara details the strategies and tactics utilized by the Cuban revolutionaries in his 1961 book titled Guerrilla Warfare. In addition to that book, French philosopher Regis de Bray spent extensive time with the Cuban revolutionaries and other revolutionaries throughout Latin America and published his findings in a book titled Revolution in the Revolution in 1967. That same year, he was imprisoned in Bolivia for guerrilla activity. De Bray's book has been described as the handbook for guerrilla warfare and revolution. So what is guerrilla warfare according to Che Guevara and Regis de Bray? According to Guevara, guerrilla warfare is one of the initial phases of war and will develop continuously until, through steady growth, the guerrilla army acquires the characteristics of a regular army. The Cuban Revolution began when Che Guevara, Fidel Castro, and 80 other revolutionaries sailed from Mexico to the southwestern tip of Cuba. From there, they quickly made their way into the Sierra Maestra Mountains. It is here that they began the first stage of guerrilla warfare, which is establishment. The revolutionaries set up rudimentary operations and began a propaganda campaign to recruit and spread the message of the revolution. To achieve this, revolutionaries made excursions from the mountains into the surrounding villages. Now, they weren't just looking for soldiers to join the revolutionary forces. They also talked to farmers and their families and attempted to convince them to support the cause. Debray describes this part of the process perfectly, and he calls it armed propaganda. The support provided by the locals proved to be invaluable for the Cuban revolutionaries, and I think it's safe to say that there's no way they would have won without the support of these people. However, it's important to note that these excursions were incredibly dangerous. Batista's regime was constantly looking for revolutionaries coming out of their element, coming out of the mountains, into the surrounding villages and the plains where they could be taken out. This guerrilla propaganda relates to one of the fundamental lessons from the Cuban revolution, according to Che Guevara. It is not always necessary to wait until all the revolutionary conditions exist. The insurrectional foco can develop subjective conditions based on existing objective conditions. We'll come back to the Spanish word foco in just a minute. Guevara suggests that the revolutionaries can use this guerrilla propaganda to create the subjective conditions for a revolution. This is a shift away from traditional Marxism, and this is what Debray is referring to in the title of his book, Revolution in the Revolution. He suggests that the ways in which the Latin American revolutions achieved success established a new theory of revolution in addition to a new military strategy and tactics known as guerrilla warfare. After the revolutionaries have established themselves, they begin the second phase of guerrilla warfare according to Debray, which is development and enemy offensive. During this phase in the revolution in Cuba, Batista's army began attacking the revolutionaries. However, due to the difficult terrain of the Sierra Maestra Mountains, the revolutionaries sustained very minimal casualties compared to what it could have been had they attacked Batista's army on the plains or in the cities. One of the key points of guerrilla warfare is to force the enemy to attack the revolutionaries on terrain in which they have not been well trained. The Sierra Maestra Mountains in Cuba provided an advantage for the revolutionary troops. These attacks during this phase also function to grow the revolutionary numbers. As people begin to see that the regime is willing to violently oppress the movement, more people are sympathetic to the cause and willing to join. As the numbers of the revolutionary forces grew, new columns were formed. When revolutionary forces numbered around 120, they were divided into two columns. The second column would be between 45 and 60 people. The first, second column in the Cuban Revolution was led by Che Guevara and established in July of 1957. As the numbers continue to grow, more columns are created, and so on. The specific form of guerrilla warfare used in Latin American revolutions is sometimes referred to as foquismo. The Spanish word foco translates in English as focus. This is because the revolutionaries maintained a center of operations in the Sierra Maestra Mountains from which the columns branched out. Also, the center was designed to be flexible and mobile so it could relocate quickly. It was never a stationary target. 
As Debray explains, the advantages a guerrilla force has over the repressive army can be utilized only if it can maintain and preserve its mobility and flexibility. If the guerrilla forces can survive the second phase of guerrilla warfare, which very clearly Castro's troops were able to do, then they begin the third and final stage, the revolutionary offensive. At this point, the revolutionary forces have gained support of the masses, both in people willing to join the revolutionary army and in locals willing to provide supplies and information. In the case of Cuba, the revolutionaries no longer needed the advantage they gained by being in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. It's in this stage that Castro and his troops begin traveling northward and attacking Batista's army on the plains and in the cities. As just one example of these victories in the cities, the column led by Che Guevara seized Santa Clara on January 1st, 1959. This was a decisive victory and marked a turning point for the revolution. Batista quickly fled the country, and the revolutionary forces were able to seize Santiago de Cuba and Havana shortly thereafter. So in conclusion, guerrilla warfare as described by Che Guevara and Regis Debray used in the Cuban Revolution and in many other Latin American revolutions is the initial phase of the Revolutionary War. It consists of three stages. Establishment, Development and Enemy Offensive, and Revolutionary Offensive. This is how 82 revolutionaries, including Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, were eventually able to grow a revolutionary army that was capable of defeating the Batista regime. If you'd like more related to the Cuban Revolution, check out our other videos, one in which we provide a full history of the Cuban Revolution, and one in which we talk about Fidel Castro's famous speech, History Will Absolve Me.